It's the Tiny and Nate Show. I'm Tiny. And I'm Nate, here to help you create time and money freedom through real estate investing so that you can live a life full of impact and joy. Oh, yeah. Impact and joy. Let's do impact this. And joy. I get pumped up every time. <laughs> I do, too. Mm. Uh, when we, I feel that, we, that beat. Mm. I think we're the, like, two of two people to get that excited about it. But yeah. it really, you know, jacks me up. That's good. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> Daniel, Tiny Ford, Nathan, Conant, Nate, Nathan, right. Conant, Nate the Great Conant back here. Today we're going to be talking about why so many Americans are moving and where they're going. What do you think about that? I I think it's interesting. Uh, I personally am one of those Americans that moved recently. Uh, kind of was pushed because of you know late events of the world pandemic and whatnot. Um, so this is going to be interesting to me personally. I uh, one of the states listed is where I moved to. So it's like, oh, look at that. I'm one of those people. But yep. yeah, it, big reshuffle. This has been a huge topic that I think um, I've been asked about. I've been curious about. I know you are. And it's like, where are people coming from? Where are they going to? Why? And as real estate investors, uh, how can we take advantage of that? How can we facilitate that? How can how can we both help and um, make wise business decisions based on it? So. That's right. That's right. So if you are one of those people that has recently moved out of state, mm -hmm. leave a comment below. Let us know what state you left and which state you went to. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit about why, too, just a sentence or two. We're super curious. So we're going to uh, do something a little bit different today. We're going to borrow from this article on fool.com by Dana George, published February 7th last month. And uh, we're just going to borrow from some of her research. And some, I'll just read a little bit of this. The key point she mentions in this is that the number of people moving has been on the rise since the first news of uh, the COVID. And people appear to be looking for homes in more affordable areas, wide open spaces. Um, it says that more than 10% of Americans moved residences in the first part of 2021. Uh, and that's more uh, like nearly 1% more than typically would do so in an entire year. More than would do so in an entire <laughs> year. So that That's means somewhere around 33.5 million people picked up and moved as a global pandemic raged. So she's going to go ahead and on and ask uh, why here. And the number one thing is family. So when you think about people moving for family, you know, neither of us move in the, live in the same state as our, as our parents or in-laws, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, but in terms of the, you know, when people did some some polls asking people, 34.5% of respondents um, said they were making a move closer to family. What do you think that, what do you think that has to do with? Well, I, I mean, on the surface of it, I think there's just uh, kind of the, the transactional or tactical things. People don't want to get on planes. People don't want to yep. have to go visit people. They want to just live next to them. And I also think a fair amount of people kind of were shaken up by life is really short and you don't know what's going to, you know, tomorrow's not a sure thing. And so spend, spend the time you have with the people you love. That would be my, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but it's probably true. That's, that's a pretty big motivating factor for most, I would assume. But I mean, that's, yeah. isn't that half, no, isn't that 10% of the population? Uh, 30, what? 3 million people. That's huge. Cause there's 300 million people. 10, more than 10% of Americans moved residents in the Jeez, first part of 2021. That's crazy. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. that is a massive migration of people, like just moving all around. That's huge. And, and I did not change states, but I definitely know that 2020, 2021 had me texting and calling my mom a lot more. So maybe that's my miniature yeah. version of the same yeah. thing. Uh, the other two reasons were job transfer and space. Uh, mm hmm I'm going to skip over job, job transfer right now as America and go to space as Americans began mm -hmm. to use their homes as schools, schools, gyms and offices, right? Mm -hmm. Available yep. space became important. Uh, I'm, I'm working out of a home office. You're working out of a home office. Um, yep. What do you think? Just uh, get out your magic, magic, your magic uh, ball here make a little in interpretation about the future. Do you think that's going to continue to be, to be a thing? I, I think so. Um, when, when people in mass, not everybody, right. You can't, you can't repair toilets remotely. Like you got to be on site for that. But um, for jobs that can be remote and so much of our works workforce is 
virtual or can be because it's on a terminal, it's on a computer. When all those people realize or have the ability now for the first time to be location independent, you realize how big our country is and how many places there are that you can live um, that are probably cooler than the place you live now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like like the the just amount of people that you ask, this is this has been, you know, my, I think my wife and I are, are a little bit different than the norm on this one. We we've been very intentional where we live and it we haven't gotten it right. Like we've moved a couple of times across the country um, in pursuit of where we want to live forever. Um, yeah, no place is perfect. But I think a lot of people never ask themselves where they want to live. They just live where they live because that's where they live. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've asked so many people that and they're just like, I, I don't know. Like, well, yeah, what, what makes you want to live here? It's like, I, I'm from here. Like, family's here. Like, where where else would I live? It's like, I don't know. It's a big planet. Like, <laughs> anywhere <laughs> you, you want, you get to pick. So, um, yeah, I just think, I think most people, I think most people never ask themselves where they wanted to live um, until recently when it was kind of like, I could live on the other side of the planet or other side of the country or in a different state or in a different town um, that I could still make a living, but I can enjoy life more or I can be closer to people I care about more. So. Yeah. Well, you guys specifically chose a place that was close to a mountain that you could ski. And I think that that's was right. amazing. And that's totally transformed your, your date days with your wife, hasn't it? Oh, it's been incredible. I mean, with her, with my kids, <laughs> like, you know, I could take my girls on dates and we go skiing or whatnot. But yeah, I mean, just the, the quality of life um, that you can have when you live closer to where you do what you enjoy. We say we want to yeah. live where we play. And, yeah. you know, not everybody does the same things we do. But, you know, if you love boating and you don't live near water, that sucks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I think that's that's a cause, a big cause of like life is short. You make sure you're not wasting any of the days that you get. And moving's part of that. Yeah. So where are they going? When Extra Space Storage looked into where people moved in 2021, they noticed some trends they believe will carry over mm -hmm. into this year of 2022. And mm -hmm. states with lower living costs and more space attract the most significant number of new residents. You want to guess mm -hmm. what the number one state is on this list? Mm, I'd say somewhere warm and maybe in the it south. Is, it's warm. Yep. It's south. Yep. Maybe, maybe Texas or Arizona. You got it, Arizona, AZ. Oh, sweet. They, they, their little paragraph here is digital nomads seeking sunshine and heat get plenty of both in Arizona, making it the top destination for Americans moving to a new state. Yeah. I mean, when we were down in Phoenix, it was exploding. So, you could see yeah. That. This is my target place for uh, for a vacation rental. And a bunch of the realtors I spoke with this last week uh, are, are doing the exact same thing. And investors too, realtors and investors mm -hmm. and realtor investors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Number two sense. is Florida. Yeah. Number two is Florida. Relocations are on the rise in Florida. Warm weather, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. And no state income tax. The property taxes nice. are low. Yep. Yep. That's a big one. Uh, yeah. Huge. All right. Number three is Idaho. The great what, what? Pacific Northwest. That's right. I can't. I mean, believe, it's, ter first... it's terrible. Don't live here. Yeah. Don't move here. No. It's awful. No. You won't like it. It's way too cold. The people are awful. Don't move here. That's miserable. <laughs> it was only a matter of time, says this article, before more people figured out how huge and sparsely populated Idaho is. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> there's a hundred. There's a hundred mountain ranges. A hundred mountain ranges in Idaho. Not a hundred mountains. No, a hundred mountain ranges. It's ridiculous. Like there's so it's so mountainous. I knew nothing about Idaho other than some like just generalities that were pretty terrible um, yeah. about Idaho. But it's it's gorgeous. But don't move here. It's don't we don't need more people. <laughs> <laughs> this this article says that more than twice as many people moved to the state than moved out in 2020. I believe that. Fun fact. So um, I'm in North Idaho. And so like the Coeur d'Alene MLS is something I have access to. And uh, oh, yeah. last year, last year, 51%. So the majority of the homes that were bought purchases were purchased yeah. by out-of-state buyers. 51%. In Coeur 
in Coeur d'Alene, Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene MLS, which is pretty big. Yeah, pretty much all of most of North Idaho. But that's that's massive. Like so so this is this is not in this article, but something that I think is interesting is this concept of culture, cultural identity. Okay. And what's what's changing as in a cause or as an effect of this big national migration. The identity of certain places is changing because the people who move there are changing it. They bring all their beliefs and you know values and and what they like to do, their hobbies and everything into certain areas. And it it's a re- it's there's a it causes a real tension between locals, people who were born there, and uh, the people moving there. So, right. You know, what are you, what are your thoughts on like assimilating into a new place? Like, should you just bring whatever you like to do and the locals can deal with it, or do you you know assimilate what? I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. Well, I think it's hard to, to, to look at any American in the face and say, wherever you go, change to be exactly like them. There's True. there's certain aspects of human behavior where it's almost impossible not to grow to be more like the people you're around. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if you looked at a Californian and said, don't California my Idaho, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> People don't like being told what not to do, right? So they're going to come no. with, with their ideas. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know that you can stop that sociological yeah. phenomenon. Um, yeah. Or like even if you said to people, hey, it would kind of be better if you uh, looked at some of our values here. And and uh, yeah, what do you think? Because I, I yeah, I, I have a hard time. I, I do think I do think it could be valuable for people for for locals in these places as you see these things changing yeah to speak up for and um have to be less passive about they want their, <laughs> what they want their communities to be and become like yeah. in the future yep i think there's mm-hmm. value in that yeah i think it's i think there's an opportunity there to speak up to like what what you care about as a community hey here's our values we really care about families we really care about uh the local people having a place to live. So like affordable mm. housing. Um, these are the things that are in our heritage uh, as far as what we're great at. We're great at these trades or making this product or you know, this heritage is really valuable to us. And we celebrate it in these ways, like come join us um, and, and you're welcome like to come have fun with us or whatever. But I, I would totally agree. You can't force anybody to do that. You can't force anyone to like put down or suppress who they are to like join your thing. But it's, I've been kind of a quiet observer as much as I can be quiet, which is very difficult, but just observing this tension between people who are from here and kind of their views. And it differs. It totally differs. But uh, there's some people who are just downright hostile. You know, where Mm -hmm. are you from is the first question they ask. It's like, whoa, it's rare. It's it's less common. But um, I found an amazing thing here in this community. And it, I'm sure this is this is common wherever. So it's not like just happens to be this community. But it's like the people who are moving here are often moving for the same reason. Mm. And so I'm, you know, wherever, wherever people are moving to, I think I'm curious if that phenomenon or that um, observation can be made in communities all over the place. So like, people who because i think people are moving for different reasons than they used to in the past Mm -hmm. like in the past if you made a cross-country move likely it was job related not in in, you know 10 percent of the of the country's not just moved all at once before to my knowledge maybe the dust bowl but that wasn't 10 percent of the population anyways i think you're gonna have this really cool maybe not cool interesting effect where people are moving to places because they want to be there and so you might have more of a like concentration of interests. Mm. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like people who move boating, to, mountain bikers. Yeah. Like you might, you might have some, some improvements in different areas of our culture or, um, recreational sports or because like, Hey, now Arizona is all about, I don't know. I don't know what people do in Arizona. It's the desert. I don't like Arizona. That's a bad example. Uh, <laughs> people who move to people who move to like Colorado because they love to ski or something, or sure. um, you know, California because they love to surf. I don't know. It's just an well, observation I've made. 
here's here's an interesting thing again from this article. So the next the the state state four and five are North and South Carolina. Oh yeah, wow. Which cut which surprised me. Um, but the low cost of living, uh-huh. outdoors, um, top states to remote work from. It's also wow. uh, a big a number of big this com- this article is claiming that a big number of companies have moved to the state. Mm-hmm. Um, that makes sense. So if your median house price is three hundred thousand there, versus very attractive. Yeah, six hundred thousand on the waste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One point five million in places in California. So you've Goodness. got a great median house price. You've got businesses moving there. You've got the ability to remote work from there. And so mm-hmm. I think people are seeing it's incredibly affordable compared to many of the other areas in the country. Yeah. I mean, that is super attractive. I've, you know, a lot of the clients that we've had, had that we've purchased their homes, you know, they're moving east. They're mm-hmm. going, they're, they're selling their $450 okay house and they're buying almost outright a mansion for 250 You know, <laughs> it doesn't happen all the time, but whether you're moving to a small town in, central texas or small town you know outside of like the charlotte north carolina area or south carolina i can't remember i think it's i think it's north carolina um yeah those those areas are exploding they really are i think it's going to be interesting uh, our infrastructure like nationally has been i think at a d minus rating for 20 years i'm curious hmm. how yeah it's been a real problem i'm curious how the infrastructures of these exploding towns are going to keep up with these mm. just hemorrhaging populations. That's going to be something interesting. It's like, yeah, it's great to live here, but you're sitting in three hours of traffic to go 20 miles. Like, you know, yeah. You're going to be so under I, construction. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you're just talking like roads, bridges, water, power, these kinds of things, how, yeah, how they're going to handle it and sewer, simple, sewer systems. Texas. Yeah, exactly. Sewer systems, you know, you, you just, you're expediting the growth from what a city planner is planning. Say, hey, over the next 10 years, we're expecting a 7% population increase. Well, that seven just went to 21 in a year. Like, yeah. What what do we do? <laughs> so I think I think a lot of uh communities are going to be experiencing very similar problems. So I'm, I'm curious if there's any learning that can be done ahead of time or like planning that can be done. I don't know. I'm not a city planner. I just find that interesting. No, no, it is interesting. And I was speaking with uh, a realtor who's down in Temple, Texas today, mm-hmm. and she's down there mm-hmm. buying uh, investment property for herself, maybe a little vacation home. Mm-hmm. And that is the city that comes in at number six, which is or the, te- the, the state that comes in at number six. Texas mm-hmm. is another mm-hmm. state with influx of new businesses, says this article. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. While big cities like Austin and Dallas continue to thrive, smaller suburban towns like Richmond, Mm-hmm. And Katy, mm-hmm. Texas, mm-hmm. Katie, Texas, have seen the most dramatic growth mm-hmm. because yep. towns and towns like them across the state offer a low cost of living and affordable mm-hmm. housing. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you don't go outside, like, you know, it's so <laughs> humid there. <laughs> I, some, sometimes I really wish I didn't like going outside because there's some really cheap places to live in the United States where. It's like 107% humidity and like 115 degrees most of the time. Um, but I really like is that, that. Is that that feeling like going in one of those, either a sauna or like a steam shower? Is that kind of the feeling where it just oppresses yeah, in your lungs? It's worse. But yes, that's it's like that. Less people in towels, but you're sweatier for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. It's really <laughs> awful. <laughs> I mean, I grew, so I grew up in North Texas and like, it's not nearly as bad as like Houston. You can, if anybody's, there's nobody from Houston watching this, but if there is, sorry, I hate your city. It's just so humid. <laughs> it's so humid. I'm sure there's cool stuff about Houston. I just, you couldn't pay me enough to live there, but it's like, it's, you walk from an air conditioned uh, space to another air conditioned space. And in between your shirt's soaking wet, like it's that humid. I just wasn't made for that. And I, I have a lot of surface area and I, in theory should like cool down really easily, but I don't. It's, just, <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> well, it, uh, yeah, I think if you move into Arizona or to Texas for a job or for space or to be closer to family, you are definitely going to be looking for a place with a pool and an air conditioner, yes. which is yes. 
two things that you rarely see up here in the Pacific Northwest. No way. Yeah. Top tip for people in the South, start a pool business, <laughs> right? Like that's, that is something interesting. Cause like the people who watch this are probably business owners. That's, that's something I thought about when, uh, let's see, I think I was, I was graduating college or it, I don't know. It was 10, 15 years ago. And it was keep an eye on the aging population, the baby boomers. Like there's going to be such a massive industry serving their needs because it's huge, like millions and millions of people. Well, now with this, it's like what what industries are going to skyrocket and and just be so profitable due to this move, due to these these ten percent moving in a short time. Um, there's going to be all kinds of service industries that are going to flourish. But they're going to be different, right? Like behavior has changed. It's been modified. Uh, everyone wants pickup. And so maybe starting a restaurant isn't a great idea. Or maybe starting one that doesn't have a dining room is a good idea. Like, <laughs> I don't know. You know? Hey, speaking of that, before we, wrap, before we wrap up here, I want to make sure everybody knows to definitely subscribe here on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're watching this. And mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, if you're a podcaster and you're like on uh, iTunes or... or uh, Spotify, or Apple, yeah, Google Podcasts. Uh, the show's on there now too. So go and uh, right. hit the subscribe button where you like to listen to this kind of stuff. Lastly, right. I just wanted to mention some very, very important news about Washington State, which Tell is me. that we now have an official sport. We do P pickleball. That's a real pickleball thing now? is now the official sport of Washington State. Yes, it would be. It would yeah. be. <laughs> Pickleball's fun, dude. I got a pickleball okay. net at my house. We're gonna go. We're Pick, gonna make a pickleball court. Fun. This. Come Don't on, make dude. Fun of my it, pickleball. <laughs> okay. I just see like when I think of pickleball, I think of a bunch of hipsters standing around in a circle, like throwing things at each other and like jumping out of the way. That's what I associate with pickleball. <laughs> Have you ever played pickleball? <laughs> no, clearly, clearly not. Isn't it the one with the trampoline? Isn't that pickleball? No. Oh, that's no, that's something else completely. T pickleball is like a miniature version yeah, of tennis, but you've got you've got a you've got like a wiffle ball and a hard wooden paddle. It's like it's like in between ping pong, tennis, and wiffle ball. It's oh fun. yeah, I had a completely different thing in mind. What was yeah. I thinking about? <laughs> Probably darts. <laughs> no. Remember darts? No, I remember darts. Not lawn darts. That's, that's lawn darts. Be interesting. We yes. had those growing up. We had lawn darts growing up. Not They're only so that, dangerous. not so only that, we turned regular like wall darts into yard darts. And I have a, I have a memory of my younger brother flinging up a regular sharp dart into oh the goodness. air in the backyard, and it landed in my brother's head and stuck. No way. <laughs> That's like my worst nightmare. But with a lawn <laughs> dart, like that would go through your skull. Like that yeah, would just yeah. kill yeah, you. Yeah, it was instantly. a good thing. It was a good thing that it was a regular dart instead of a lawn dart. Wow. But it actually did stick in my brother's head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do you have a picture of that? that would no, be so of course amazing. not. This was oh. way before cameras. <laughs> That's right. This was back in the early 40s, at least. You look good, by the way. Happy 98th Thank birthday. Thank you. Yes, yeah, it feels welcome. good to be 98. <laughs> so Arizona, Florida, Idaho, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Texas. This is where people are moving. Tiny, you got anything Yo. else to add? Uh, no, just, I mean, I'm I'm pretty stoked. Our team did get, to reiterate what you said, this is, this is up and live on like all the major podcast stuff. So yeah. if you don't want to look at our pretty faces on YouTube, you can listen Ooh, to us. 98, 98-year-old faces. Our 98-year-old mugs. Um, yeah. You can listen to us. What is it again? Google Podcasts. I'm a Google person. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Apple, whatever Spotify. iTunes is. Yep. Spotify. Yeah. Anything oh, else? Yeah. All the Any, things. Anywhere, anywhere, all anywhere the, you all listen to places. podcasts. Yeah. yeah. And anywhere wonderful music is heard or podcasts are spread. Stuff like that. <laughs> we better end this yeah. thing now. All right. Well, it's been fun making up stuff and talking to you. It's, it's been good. It's been good. See you on the next one. <laughs> See ya.